Thanks very much to SIPFA and the Code de Conf for having me here, for having PIFA in this panel. I'd like to bring you back to Basecamp a bit. I think we've just done a bit of a tour around the world and uh, maybe we don't quite like the prospects of what's happening out there. So I think it's time to return to Basecamp to have a bit of a thought about uh, how governments can deal with a challenging situation that they're in. How do they deal with this uh, volatility, this glo global volatility, the volatility of their own finances? Well, PIFA is one of the answers. Now, let me see if I can get this machine to uh, get onto my presentation. There, great. So I'm going to first of all, because I know that a lot of you don't know very much about PIFA, although there are some people who I'm sure do, either because you're part of our family, the PIFA family, or because you are aware of its benefits as a means of analysing public financial management uh, that uh, for the last uh, 15 years or so. So firstly, let me just give you a bit of an overview of what PIFA is. PIFA is basically two components. It's a framework for assessing public financial management, but it's also a program for supporting improvements in public financial management through um, better knowledge about how public financial management works and what impact it can have on improved fiscal sustainability and improved government performance more generally. PIFA consists of a methodology um, involving seven pillars. The pillars cover all aspects of, well, all the main aspects of public financial management practice, including budget reliability, transparency of public finances, the management of assets and liabilities, policy based fiscal strategy and budgeting, predictability and control in budget execution, account, accounting and reporting and external scrutiny and audit. And that basically, basically covers the main areas that, uh, that governments uh, actually operate in, in terms of public financial management. We have 31 indicators overall, but when you, when you break those down specifically, we actually have 94 specific performance indicators, performance measures across those 31 areas. You can see they're spread quite widely covering things like aggregate expenditure and revenue outturns compared with the original budget, budget classification, transparency of public finances to the parliaments and to the public, the risk, fiscal risk issues, public investment, public asset management, debt management, fiscal forecasting, medium term expenditure budgeting, legislative scrutiny of budgets, revenue management, cash management, payroll controls, procurement, internal controls on non-salary expenditures, internal audit, financial reporting in year and end year, external audit and legislative scrutiny. So you can see there are quite a number of different aspects there that we cover and some of the uh, people in the audience would already be familiar with PIFA because PIFA has been used uh, in many places already. So why would people be interested in PIFA? Essentially what PIFA does is it provides governments and particularly in uh, less developed countries it provides the governments and the development partners with an opportunity to first of all get a better understanding of how things work. Because PIFA is evidence-based, it's objective, it doesn't rely on people's opinions about how things are working, but it gathers evidence on how things actually work. It then provides a report to the interested parties to discuss where the main priorities are, where the strengths and weaknesses are, in public sector performance and an opportunity to work out a plan for how to, how to um, improve those areas and to monitor progress over time. So that's essentially what PIFA does. It's a catalyst for getting a conversation going about how to improve country development. Through the development of public financial management, obviously that affects public service delivery, it affects allocation of resources, it affects fiscal sustainability and ultimately it supports sustainable development. And so 
Our main goal through PIFA is not necessarily to say where the strengths and weaknesses are in a country's public financial management, although that is the starting point, that's the core of, uh, of our work. It's basically about how that can be used to improve public financial management performance and to improve public service delivery. And then getting back to Nenad's uh, comments earlier, how do governments actually manage within an environment that people are demanding more, that they have less trust in government, that uh, there's increasing volatility in the world economy. Well, certainly by having better public financial management, having more agile, more capable government, uh, then I think that is a good starting point. So the advantages that PIFA has is that because it's a standardised methodology that you can use across any country, uh, it allows you to measure progress over time as well as at a point in time in any country using virtually identical measures uh, to interpret the, in the public financial management environment. It builds the momentum for reform through bringing partners and, uh, and governments together and it encourages coordination so that people will work together, the donors, uh, governments, international institutions, banks, uh, private sector, um, civil society, all working together for the benefit of individual countries and for the people within those countries. And the proof of PIFA's um, benefit is it has extensive international acceptance. It's been going now for 12 years effectively as a methodology for assessing public financial management and uh, it is, has been overwhelmingly accepted by many of the countries who've used it not just once but sometimes four times in the last 10 years. So it's something that's uh, repeated in successive assessments over time to update the, uh, the understanding of public financial management um, at different points in time. Some of our stakeholders, some of our what I call the PIFA family, um, have already said what they think about PIFA at our conference which was run earlier this year at which SIPFA was also involved. Um, in Costa Rica, for example, they found that the, the value of PIFA was really about the uh, need for increasing transparency. And one of the things that PIFA is much more relevant uh, in terms of the, the new developments in public finance and in terms of trying to build trust uh, between government and citizens is that we look a lot more at public um, finance transparency under the new methodology that we released in February this year. So it's, uh, for, for governments, it really brings home the importance of ex exposing uh, public sector accounts to the public, having them reviewed and having them uh, understood and opportunity for debate in, in, the, public in the public. It really, uh, as well as being outward looking, it is also inward looking in that it gives the opportunity for governments to explain uh, better, particularly ministries of finance and central ministries, how people within a country, within the public sector can work better to actually improve their own performance in public financial management. And uh, um, in Santa Catarina State, so PIFA has also used at sub-national level as well as, well as at national level, they, uh, in Santa Catarina in Brazil, they found that it was really a valuable tool to uh, engage staff, to understand their responsibilities and to actually improve performance from inside, so develop their own responsibility. Similarly in Liberia, which is perhaps a much more a uh, complex case. Um, it's been a foundation, it's been a stable basis on which public financial management can be improved over time regardless of uh, maybe uh, volatility in other aspects of society and the world that uh, one thing that PIFA has done is it provides stability in focusing on what's important in public financial management and to get people to, to use that to their benefit and uh, also to, to understand how effectively government plans are working. In uh, Morocco, for example, they had a financial management reform program and they used PIFA to tell them roughly how well they were doing and where they needed to improve. So where are we? PIFA is in uh, 150 countries so far, but there are certainly more countries that we would like to, to cover. You can see that Africa is pretty well covered there by the dots. Uh, 
Caribbean and East Asia are also quite well covered by PFER. We've actually had 541 assessments over the last 12 years and uh, at national level and sub-national level and around about 40% of those have been uh, repeat or successive assessments where countries have decided it was good the first time and they went back to review three or four years later. Then in terms of coverage, like the, uh, the, the dot um, picture showed before, Sub-Saharan Africa is our, our, ma our major user, East Asia and the Pacific and Latin America and the Caribbean are other major users. Europe and Central Asia is also big and we are hoping to expand in some of the other markets. I know in South Asia, for example, in the next couple of years that dot is going to get quite a lot bigger. In terms of income groups, the ones that have found PFA most useful so far have been the low income and middle income countries, particularly the lower middle income countries where we have 100% uh, coverage. Uh, higher income countries haven't found PFA as useful for them in the past, but we think that in future with the change in the methodology to focus on things that are probably most uh, interesting to them like asset and liability management, risk management and public investment that they will start using it more. And we hope that uh, particularly with an audience of the, um, the Court of Comp here that uh, you will see it, uh, Europe as potentially an area where PFA can add value at the national and sub-national level. So what does PFA actually tell us about performance? It tells you a lot about your internal performance within a country, but I'm not going to talk too much about that today because I think in this audience what we're interested in more is about what it can tell us about uh, performance across countries. And I'll just show you a few diagrams which draw on the 150 uh, family members that we have to look at uh, what kind of um, spread of performance there is over time. This is really valuable, not just to the countries themselves, but also to, to uh, development partners to identify where they can intervene and help to strengthen the robustness of public financial management. The red are obviously the hotspots, and the green is obviously where the grass is. So you can see that in some countries their aggregate expenditure outturn is doing very well, but their, their pattern with revenue outturn is somewhat different. Uh, sometimes better, sometimes worse. And that, that's a really good indicator about how much control you have over your revenue, over your budgets, how credible they are. In terms of the, the application of budgets, documentation, medium-term budgeting, preparation process and legislative scrutiny of budgets, again, the pattern is quite different. You can see that, uh, for example, uh, in some countries they have strong budget preparation processes, but maybe they're not so strong in terms of legislative scrutiny. And that is an area where PFA is really valuable because it not, just, not only looks at one or two indicators, but it looks, like, looks at a system of indicators across the board. Similarly, in, in audit, I think probably the most interesting one for this audience is if you look at the, um, if you look at the, is this working? Oh, apparently not. Anyway, if you look at the pattern of annual financial statements, it looks quite good in some places, maybe not so good in, uh, in um, Central Africa, um, but uh, if you look at the, the external audit, then the pattern uh, doesn't look quite so good. So the combination of um, annual financial statements and external audit means that you know maybe there are lots of things that uh, can be improved in terms of the system. And one of the things that PFA and also the sorts of things that uh, Ian's going to talk about in terms of the whole of systems approach, in terms of the system of public financial management, this is where we need to look more closely. So PFA is moving much more towards that analysis, much more towards the understanding of public financial management across the world, not just within country, but between countries, and understanding the evolution of public financial management over time. We've been around for 15 years now, and we've, had, uh, we've been developing our, um, our methodology, we've been applying it, expanding it, to the point where we now cover um, the majority of countries around the world. But in our next phase, we intend to move into a much more analytical approach.
to much more collaborative approach with other diagnostic tools. And one of the, uh, I think one of the examples of that, the illustration, is that SIPFA and uh, PIFA have a much closer relationship because we have a lot in common in terms of a common interest in improving public financial management and a common interest in understanding the connection between aspects of public financial management and the connection between different countries. So over the next five years, PIFA is not only going to be expanding the use of its methodology and strengthening the capability of those who use it and supporting them, but we're also going to move into helping countries and helping development partners and international organisations to understand what it means, how public financial management is changing and how it can be improved. And so uh, with that, I shall encourage you first of all to stay in touch with us because lots of things will be changing over the next few years. And uh, if you uh, would like to join up with us on Twitter, there's our hashtag up there and so we really encourage you to join us, but also to follow us um, on our website where you'll find a lot more information about PIFA. So thank you very much.